and welcome to lecture 3 of module 5 uh, where we are looking at uh, uh, regression and interpolation. Uh, in the previous two modules we uh, introduced what, what we meant by regression, what we meant by interpolation and uh, then we looked at uh, various different ways of uh, linear interpolation. Started off with uh, uh, fitting a straight line uh, y equal to a0 plus a1x and then extended that to multilinear regression where uh, y in general will be a function of more than one variables. Uh, the example that we took was a0 plus a1x plus a2u plus a3w and we saw that the overall equations that we get follow a certain pattern uh, and we, we can reduce the, uh, the problem of finding a0, a1, a2 and a3 and so on uh, to the problem of solving n linear equations in n unknowns. <coughs> That was uh, the first uh, method that we look, uh, looked at. Uh, the second method that we considered uh, after that was a matrix based, based method where we wrote uh, our equation as y equal to the linear function plus error and uh, then it in, uh, amounted to uh, a least squares problem. Uh, what we are going to do today is look at polynomial fit. and fitting of some functional forms uh, which are essentially non-linear functions, but which we can linearize them and then go ahead and use a uh, uh, linear or multilinear regression in the same form. Okay, so, starting off with the polynomial uh, fitting, an example of this would be the specific heat C p is uh, written as a function of temperature and it, it, it might be a polynomial function of temperature we can write this as a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared plus a3t to the power 3. Okay. So, this is our polynomial fit that we want to obtain. We want to obtain a0, a1, a2 and a3 uh, such that uh, the error between the Cp computed by the model using this value and the error between uh, and the, uh, the Cp value that is obtained from the data is minimized. So, in this case the data that we have is going to be C p 1 or rather I should write T 1 C p 1 because we have been writing it in the form x comma y where x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So, we have T 1 C p 1, T 2 C p 2 and so on up to T n C p n. Okay. So, this is the data that we have. So, let us now define y i as nothing but C p i, x i is going to be nothing but T i, u uh, i is nothing but T i squared and w i is nothing but T i cubed. Okay. So, with this definition y i as C p i, x i as T i, u i as T i squared and w i i t as T i cubed, what we can say is that the overall equation that we now want to fit Okay, so, it's, uh, it, it amounts to now fitting the functional form a0 plus a1x plus a2u plus a3w. In this case x1, x2 and uh, uh, sorry x, uh, u and w are not three independent variables as we had in, uh, in the previous lecture, but instead x is going to be temperature t, u is t squared 
and W is T cubed okay. Uh, once we write it in this form we can then use the same ideas of multilinear regression and we can then go ahead and obtain the overall solution and this is going to work uh, as well as a, a, a general multilinear regression uh, of that form as well. So, let us uh, see what we got uh, in the multilinear regression case for this particular model. For this model what we had is the matrix Y was defined as Y1, Y2 and so on up to Yn. Y recall is nothing but Cp. So, we have Cp1, Cp2 and so on up to Cpn that is going to be our uh, vec uh, vector Y. Our matrix X if you recall from uh, the previous lecture the first column of matrix X was 1, 1, 1, 1 repeated n times. The second column was x1, x2, x3 up to xn, third column u1, u2, u3 up to un and fourth column w1, w2, w3 up to wn uh, using the relationship that we have just re uh, written a few moments back. We can write x as 1, 1 and so on up to 1. We have n number of 1s over here. Uh, next is going to be t1, t2 and so on up to tn. T1 squared, T2 squared and so on up to Tn squared and uh, T1 cube, T2 cube and so on up to Tn cube okay. So, this is going to be our y, this is going to be our x and our a0, a1, a2 and a3 are going to be nothing but x transpose x inverse multiplied by x transpose multiplied by y. This particular term x transpose x inverse x transpose is known as the left inverse of matrix x. Okay. So, this is what is the functional form, this is how we go ahead and do uh, the polynomial regression uh, for in general we have n data points and we want to uh, fit an mth order polynomial. So, to extend it from uh, this particular case to a general mth order polynomial if we need to extend it all we need is additional columns in this particular uh, matrix. So, if extending it to n to mth order polynomial in that case so I will erase this particular column also. So, we will have T1 squared, T2 squared up to T2 to the power n, T1 cube, T2 cubed up to T2 to the power uh, uh, Tn to the power, uh, power 2 and so on up to T1 to the power m, T2 to the power m and so on up to Tn to the power m and this is what we will get uh, if we have to extend it to a general mth order polynomial in uh, uh, temperature. Uh, what the first thing that is necessary in, in a case like this is that m has to definitely be less than n. You cannot have m to be equal to or greater than uh, greater than n. In general m has to be much lesser than n for, for this to work. If we do not have that particular condition satisfied uh, we will this particular left inverse of the, of the matrix will not exist and if the left inverse does not exist uh, there will not be a least square solution a0, a1, a2 up to a m plus 1. Uh, keep in mind that the number of coefficients that we are going to find uh, through this procedure are going to be 1 more than the order of this equation. Why? Because we have the first coefficient as a0. So, we will have a0, a1 up to a m that makes total of m plus 1 uh, coefficients uh, that, that uh, we need to obtain through this least squares.
procedure okay so this is what is known as the polynomial regression a few words of caution for polynomial regression first thing is the polynomial fit that uh, that you want to obtain if you have uh, the number of data points as capital n the order m has to be in general much less than uh, the value of n in order for you to have a, a good confidence on uh, uh, the the uh, uh, values of the coefficients that you have obtained uh, of course if the values of the co co if m is of the order of n or m is uh, one less than uh, n in that particular case uh, what we will end up having is overfitting of the polynomial so if okay polynomial will be overfit which basically means that you can perhaps use this uh, as uh, one way of doing interpolation but uh, in order to get a regression fit this is a very uh, poor way of getting a regression fit uh, in general to fit an mth order polynomial uh, my rule of thumb that i use uh, uh, essentially is n should be about uh, two or three times at least two or three times greater than uh, the value of m uh, the second problem is as m increases the matrix x becomes ill conditioned okay uh, what we mean by the matrix becoming ill conditioned is that the inverse of the matrix uh, there is going to be lot of errors there is possibly going to be a lot of errors associated uh, with the uh, with the inverse of the matrix uh, uh, in other words what ill conditioning uh, really means uh, is that the largest eigen value of the matrix uh, x transpose x is several order of, of magnitude greater than the smallest eigen value of uh, x transpose x uh, when we are inverting uh, a number for example if we were to invert a number say 1000 when we invert it that number becomes uh, 0 0.001 on the other hand if we are inverting a number say 10 to the power minus 5 when we invert that uh, the inverse becomes 10 to the power 5 as a result the small numbers in x x transpose in some ways again I am using pedagogical liberties over here but the small numbers in uh, x transpose x or the small Eigen values in x transpose x become large Eigen values in, in its inverse as a result small errors in those Eigen values appear as very large errors when you try to invert the ma matrix because of this when uh, we try to invert uh, a particular matrix uh, we have to ensure essentially that the largest Eigen value divided by the smallest Eigen value should not be uh, a very large number uh, usually what uh, what will happen if let us say if m becomes uh, uh, greater than or equal to and again I am using an approximately equal to sign say m becomes greater than or equal to 6 uh, the matrix becomes fairly ill conditioned uh, in that uh, lambda max divided by lambda min starts becoming greater than 10 to the power 10 at under these conditions uh, if you try to inverse invert the matrix s x transpose x uh, an inversion algorithm that uh, we are trying to use will give a should give a warning that this particular matrix is going to be ill conditioned and we may not be able to rely on uh, the results that we obtain from this matrix. 